ever DM a girl, hey, hi, boobs, shocked they don't answer? Don't worry. In this video, J-Rise is going to tell you why they don't answer and how to get them to and so much more. So there's entire industries dedicated to this, right? Like the pickup artist industry and, and uh, inner game and stuff like that. It doesn't need to be that complicated, right? Like this has been going on since the dawn of time. And it applies not just to like guys hitting on girls or whatever, it applies to any relationship. Like your relationship with a, a squirrel in, in the park or a pet you own or a coworker or like a, a mentor you want to reach or someone you want to collaborate with, like an artist. How do you approach these people in a way that will be successful? Not rocket science. You bring value to them with the interaction. They're getting many interactions a day other than you. And some of those interactions are really valuable. And they're like, yo, I'm a, yeah, let's talk. Let's connect. Let's collaborate. Let's do something together. Then they get to yours and they have a totally different reaction, right? One, care about the reaction that you're, you're going for. Most people when they DM are so focused on what they want. I want this woman. I want sex. I want a relationship. I want a girlfriend. I want, I want, I want. And it's like, you can tell zero thought went into the approach. They're not looking for a good reaction. They're not doing stuff to get a good reaction. They haven't given any thought to being in the other person's shoes or what they would feel like or what they would like. Like I've been, I've been commenting on some pretty famous Instagrammers profiles recently. Chase Jarvis, Garane Jones, Gary V, Chloe Ture, Lindsay Palos. Like 90% of them reply to me in a really kind way. And they're not replying to everybody else. They're not, there's, and they're not just giving me thumbs ups or whatever. They're writing whole cool paragraphs. You can see on my Instagram profile in the little props highlights or whatever. And so it's a really good example of how you can just cold approach a stranger because I aim for my comments to be valuable. I like jam them full of valuable uh, stuff. Like not just like here's a list of valuable things, but like what's valuable to them. Do they care about photography? Are they focused on law of attraction? Are they focused on changing the world? Like whatever they're about, I'm about too. And I offer something that will help in their mission or help their followers or make them look good or expand on their point or add some clarity or some nuance. And if you do it right, they'll read it and be like, yeah, man, that feels good. But I don't have any agenda. I don't care if they respond. I'm not attached to it. I'm not focused on what I want. I'm literally doing it with like love and, and value and caring in my heart to give them a, a better, juicier, awesomer comment than they've ever gotten. And not only that, uh, I don't just do it once, I do it multiple times. When I first started commenting on Chris Cavallini, he like kind of just dismissed me as like, oh, some, another commenter or whatever. And I don't even think, I'm not even sure he like fully understood my comment. Instead of being like, oh, like I didn't get what I wanted. Uh, I just kept showing love and sending better comments and better comments. And, and now he gives me props every time I comment. Uh, and the same thing applies to approaching your boss or approaching a door-to-door -door sales or whatever. And definitely for approaching women. If you just say, oh, boobs, is that valuable to them? Has that benefited them in any way? Or is it just another useless comment for them to flick through? And then you're like, but I, I made a great joke. And it's like, sure, but did you even like bother to find out her sense of humor? Are you allowed to make jokes like that? Is it respectful? Does she appreciate it? I've seen the comments chicks get and almost every single one of them, you can tell the guy hasn't studied her, cared about her, read about her, looked through her profile, like sorted out what she likes and dislikes, sorted out what she cares about in life. They are just writing for themselves and they deserve to get shut down and rejected. That's not how you operate in life. Get it together, right? You're a smart person. Like you can do better than this. You could put in some time and effort you can be a benefit and a blessing and be valuable in their DMs. Like for me, I don't even jump to DMs because it's pretty, that's like jumping into somebody's house or something, man. Like you just jump up in their DMs. I comment multiple times on just their posts, on their stories. Hey, I let them like, see, I'm a nice fan. I'm a, I'm a whatever. And, and I'm not doing, I'm not out to get anything. 
Um, and I have the patience to not hop into DMs until the time's right. Uh, a lot of these people that I comment on, I never DM because why would I? But oh, but no one wants that. What, I have to be patient? I can't just slide right into DMs? What the hell, man? I hate this advice. Too bad, man. If you're out there looking for the magic pill and you don't want to put in the proper work to connect with another human being, you don't deserve a beautiful woman and you won't get one. Sorry if that hurts, but you can have one. You can have many. Like I'm poly, yo, I can, I'll have tons of chicks, but only if you approach them with love and value. And it's a way deeper topic than I could explain in a single video. Every, everyone you interact with is unique and individual and different and they require their own approaches, but you can sort out what that approach is if you bother to figure them out and to put your focus and your ego aside, your agenda of what you want aside and instead focus on helping them. The same goes in business, right? You help your customers, not yourself or your brand or your ego. You help your customers. You find out what they want and you solve their problems and you be valuable to them. So um, just another example of how this applies. Dave Chappelle is a famous, hilarious comedian. I think he was the highest earning comedian ever for a while. And when he took his kids to Disney World, strangers would come up to him and be like, I'm Rick James, bitch. Like quoting his most famous sketch. And Dave did not appreciate this. It was technically a compliment. They're like loving his art and quoting his comedy and recognizing him in public, but he's with his children trying to enjoy life. And he knows this, this, the Rick James sketch was funny. He doesn't need it told to him again. So it's just kind of ignorant. Like, it's just kind of like, did you bother to think like, you don't think Dave Chappelle, the world's most famous comedian has heard I'm Rick James in his face a million times. Like, you know, it's nice the first three times, first 10 times, first a hundred times, first a thousand times, but he's heard it tens of thousands of times maybe hundreds of thousands. And you know, anyone with a brain could tell like this world's famous comedian has heard this. It's not original. It's not fresh. It's not new. It's not valuable. It's the same old, same old boring compliment that everyone gives. And oh, look, someone else is joining it. Fantastic. So yeah, of course, low effort compliments are not valuable and unappealing. Uh, <clears throat> and the same goes for women. Like they get, you're beautiful or you're so hot or will you marry me or will you be my girlfriend or I'll fly you to Timbuktu all the time because they're super low effort. Those are not compliments. That's, a, that's the Rick James of compliments. Um, and she's just trying to enjoy her day and instead she has to sort through thousands of meaningless comment comments to find like one real compliment or one real connection with one real human people still they still want to connect that's why we have dms like they still want to be messaged something nice but it kind of ruins their life if they have to sort through a hundred thousand terrible ones just to find the one nugget so then how do you level up your compliments well it goes back to what i was saying before right Every woman is individual and unique, and there's no formula for what's gonna work on all of them. Well, I guess technically, like, the formula is provide value. You're beautiful isn't really value. So I was on IG the other day, and I was commenting on Lindsay Pelas, and it was the first time I'd ever commented on her profile, and she is a super hot supermodel, right? Blonde bombshell, hourglass, all that stuff, tons of followers, insane amount of followers, other thousands of people in her comments, or I could try and take it a step up. Like, wow, you write so beautifully because she wrote a caption. But again, look at her photo, say she's beautiful. Look at her caption, say it's written well. These are, these are low effort compliments, but I noticed she was sort of talking about manifesting dreams and stuff. And so I, I was like, Hmm, maybe there's something here. Like maybe she's never had a conversation about law of attraction and manifestation. Like it doesn't seem like her crowd would do that. So this would probably be an interesting conversation or a fresh comment, right? I'm already seeing like her audience and her crowd and what she usually gets. And I'm seeing what other people are going to do. And I'm seeing the most obvious things that people are going to comment on. And I definitely don't comment about those sizable and on her chest. And so instead I was like praising her for her podcast. It's because I saw that her podcast had way less views and followers than like she has millions and her podcast profile has, you know, a few thousand. And I've been listening to her podcast sincerely for a while. 
uh, I've been lurking. Like this wasn't like, oh, found a hot girl comment. I've been listening to Lindsay for a year. I remembered one particular episode of the podcast that stood out. And so I quoted it. Like I talked about the story that she talked about and she saw that and everybody else just saying, oh, whatever. She's like, man, this is a true fan. This is someone who's been following me and cares and listens. And, and I would like to encourage them and thank them for that. Like, so she's motivated to respond because that's a, I've demonstrated value in my comment. And I didn't stop the comment there, right? I started with some praise for the things she's created. And to have a, a beautiful woman create like an intelligent podcast that discusses issues and stuff is sort of uncommon. Like for her to be complimented on that is definitely a breath of fresh air. And then uh, I went on to ask a question. Like, I'm curious, do you, have you ever studied or practiced or used law of attraction? And you know, if so, why or why not kind of thing. And, and I was genuinely curious. This is not something I did. So like, ooh, I can maybe date Lindsay Palos. It was done with sincerity and authenticity and love. And you can see all the effort I put into it. it it's glaring through the comment that this dude went the extra mile. And I still didn't expect her to respond. Like, I don't care, right? Like maybe it gets lost in the flood of messages. Maybe she doesn't see it. Maybe I have to comment multiple times before she even realizes I exist. Whatever. I just wanted to genuinely express some appreciation for her. And that vibe comes through. And I put in the effort and I made the comment valuable. And I like to think she appreciated it. And my proof of that is her response. So this is not rocket science, guys. I don't know who's getting taught what or why everyone approaches in these like weird ways. But if you want to get on anybody's radar and be seen as a positive presence in their life, you just show love and put in the effort and try to make them better. You make them a better person. A lot of times I'll sort of criticize because women are so used to getting compliments, but I don't mean negging or criticizing. I mean offering critical feedback that may improve their life or their profile or their art or their beauty or their fashion because I have a lot of taste. I've developed my taste over years and my taste is valuable. My input is valuable. My aesthetic sense is valuable. So I might, I might compliment to start like, oh, fantastic shot or photo. You probably already know about this, but the, the small outlet in the back kind of detracts from it. There's lots of ways to Photoshop it out or there's this free app you could use. But like I said, you probably already know and it was just like an in the moment shot. And you see, it's like super gentle. I'm not like, you should take out the outlet. It'd be way better. Like what kind of criticism is that? I'm like, no, this is an amazing shot. And there's like some tiny little blip that I think you could level it up, but it's clear love. And I've offered a lot of solutions. I'm not just complaining. And I might even offer to, to touch it up themselves, or I might like download the photo, touch it up, re-upload it to like an image host and link them to the new version, right? It's kind of like when an artist draws a, a beautiful woman, they'll often post the artist's tribute because the artist went to all that work to serve up a better image or like a cool image. And so if I go to all that work to touch up the image, then my criticism is so much more meaningful and valuable. And it's like, this dude is going the extra mile out of his day to help me. Like, and again, I don't expect, they might just be like, eh, he's just trying to date me. If they think that, that's fine. Like maybe they're jaded and cynical. I don't know, but I do it out of love and I don't care about the response. And that makes the compliment way better. And it makes the chances way higher that I'll get a response. People can feel that vibe, man. They can feel your approach a mile away. And it's not just the little actions you do or all the tips I've given. It's the freaking vibe you bring to it. And I bring an amazing vibe. I aim to help people and I do it with no agenda. And it works for me and it can work for you. And you're smart enough to do this. I know you can. Okay, well, first I'm gonna say this can apply to men, women, men asking women, women asking men, non-binary, non-binary asking non-binary. Like I, I, I feel weird that I have to say this. It's like a long disclaimer when I feel like everyone should just get, when I say like guys asking girls, it's just, it's just a short form figure of speech to communicate the info, but whatever. There's the disclaimer. So if you've done all the preliminary legwork and stuff, like you, you vibed it all out and everybody's happy with each other and looking forward to meeting, it's, it's kind of a gimme. Um, you just give like a specific time, date, place. You start with a clear proposal of a time, date, and place, right? It's kind of like tennis. This is your first serve to them of the meeting. 
So I might say something like, let's meet at the Pickle Barrel restaurant at Young and Eglinton at 3 p.m. so we avoid traffic. Let me know if that works for you or let me know what you think. And this is not a question. There is no confusion in this. This is a clear, solid, real life proposal that I've, they can tell I've clearly thought through. Now, they might live uh, way far away. Maybe I don't know where they live right now or whatever. So I understand that this could be a terrible meeting place or, a, or they might work and have a shift. It could be a terrible meeting time. It's just a first clear, solid serve. And then it's their chance to hit it back, right? The ball's in their court. So you, your mind is free. Like if they say yes, great. If they say no, if they say here's an alternate plan, whatever. But you go on with your day. You're not nail biting nervous, hoping they get back to you and harass. Did you get it? Did you get it? Assuming you guys are getting along, this should go over pretty well. Like, wow, this guy's serious and he really wants to meet and seems pretty solid. And he even took the time to consider traffic patterns and stuff. And you don't have to do the traffic thing. It could be some, something else, right? You could be like, let's meet in New York at noon by the airport Eastern time. Now you've, you've thought about like they're in California, you're in New York. So you've clearly thought the time zone through. So it's not like too early or too late for them or whatever. Like, even if you pick the wrong time, they're like Eastern time. Like he gets it, he gets there could be a problem. And so just like with the compliments, you make a clear proposal that's high value. It's a valuable proposal because it has a lot of detail and clarity and specifics. And it shows that you care about the meeting and the time and the place and the space and all this kind of thing. Then they can either say yes. Usually you just get a yes, at least when I do it. It's like, if you thought it through well and you picked a good time and place, you'll often just get great. Or you might get a like, yes, but can we do it at 5 p.m. Or yeah, Wednesdays don't work for me and the ball's back in your court. And you're like, well, how about such and such? And so if I do that twice and they say no to both, then I'm like, well, whatever, you pick it then. And like, I might not, I might even stop the interaction, right? Because I'm clearly doing all the work of setting up this, this event and they're just randomly rejecting it. But anyways, after two attempts at that, if they say no both times, I'm just like, well, it's all in your hands. You, you try something and I'll see if I can do it. Anyways, once you get an agreement of some kind, like yes, 3 p.m. at Young and Eglinton Pickle Barrel is fine uh, and everybody's looking forward to it, there's a few ways you can approach it, right? Like you can remind them the day before or the morning of, or you can not remind them at all as like a test. Like we have a clear appointment in the calendar. Am I important to you? Are you important to me? Are we gonna be there? There's no like real right or wrong answer here. Like you gotta vibe it out. If someone seems kind of flaky to you, then you may want to not say anything to them just to like reveal if they're a flake, right? Like, oh, I can tell you a bit flaky. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show up to that meetup or I'm gonna like, or I'm gonna not show up. I'm gonna wait till like you message me or something. If I don't hear anything, I'm just gonna cancel it in my mind. Or if you feel like really good about everything and, and you wanna be considerate and extra nice and go the extra mile, then you could give them a little reminder or like let them know you're enthusiastic about it. Like, yay, I'm really looking forward to Friday or whatever. And these kind of touches make the, the event much more likely to happen, the meeting much more likely to happen. When someone can tell like, wow, dude's really enthusiastic. Like, great, I'm, I'm in for a good time. Like it usually smooths things out and makes the meeting more likely. And then I always show up to the meeting five minutes, at least five minutes early, often way more. Like I'll often bring a book or like an ebook or whatever. And I'll just like chill near the area, just like uh, doing some productive reading because I know anything can happen with traffic and uh, closures and construction and all kinds of stuff. So for a first impression, it's super terrible to show up late. You could be late with someone you've known for a long time, they'll, they'll understand or whatever, but being late for your first date or meeting is terrible. And it's like, why didn't you just leave like half an hour, an hour earlier? Most people act like that's the end of the world. Like I, I couldn't possibly, well, what am I gonna do? I'll be bored. It's like, dude, You've killed time for 30 minutes, like a million times. Like, this isn't hard. Just show up early and make a good impression. So I'll show up early, but if they're not early, then I take it as a bad sign because they should know too, right? It's a first impression for both of us. So if I'm going all this out of my way to make a good first impression early and they're, eh, you know, I just, I, I guess I, I, got, I got dressed late and I slept in and I, I just made it on time. So, so sorry. And they're being all like, don't worry, I'll make it up to you. It's like, no. 
your chance was to make a good impression. I don't want to like, I'm not going to remember our meeting together, our first time meeting together, like in my, in my mind, like, oh yeah, she was the flaky late one. I went out of my way and did all this extra work and she couldn't even like bother to get up and get out on time or show up a little bit early. So for me, that's a deal breaker. Like if, if someone's not at least on the dot, I just leave. And people like hate doing this. Oh my goodness, I couldn't possibly leave. And then often I'll leave and they'll get a text and they'll like five minutes, I'm on my way home and they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm here now or like whatever. And I'll be like, sorry, maybe we'll connect again another time. And usually we don't, but you gotta have standards and you gotta set the tone for your first meeting. And so I go out of my way to make sure the meeting goes off smooth and well and works out for everybody. And I'm there early and I make a great impression and I'm just going out of my, I'm bringing a gift, I'm treating to the food, I'm whatever, man just pulling out all the stops to make a good first impression. And if they can't do a bare minimum, we're not a good fit. So yeah, I, I think I went like way more in detail than I needed to. Basically, it's simple. Just like with the compliments, you set up a meeting with a very high value proposal and then you do your best to make each interaction valuable. You're focused on them having a good time or both of you having a good time, but them first. And uh, people can feel that and usually the meetings go well. And then secondly, have a solid standard for yourself. Promise yourself like how you're gonna handle it when you meet, if they're late or not, or if you're gonna give reminders or not, or these kind of things. And if you do all those things, generally you have a pretty easy time meeting people. It's, it's not hard. And most women I've interacted with love it. They love the certainty and clarity and confidence and how well it's planned and how at uh, attentive to detail I am. And, and they can feel the extra mile vibe. And it puts all the other like meetings they've tried to have to shame. And they're like, damn, man. And they'll feel super bad if they screw it up, like if they flake. Uh, and usually they just won't. Usually they'll make sure they make it because it's the first good meeting they've had in a long time. Anytime a chick says to me like, oh my God, like no guy gets this. And I've, all the guys I've dated were terrible at compliments and couldn't set up meetings and whatever. Like my answer is always like, well, what kind of men are you dating? Because if you're dating Tony Robbins or Gary Vee or Tom Bilyeu or Evan Carmichael or me, Lewis Howes, whoever, right? Like if you're dating a quality man, this is never happening. They all get this stuff. Not one of them is screwing up a compliment to a girl or setting a simple meeting, right? They've developed themselves into a great person. So like, What's, what's with women that they keep dating low quality men? Like why even bother? Why even interact with them? Why give them the time of day? You can spot it a mile away. This isn't a Tom or a Tony. I'm done. Just have some standards. Like, um, that's a whole other video, I guess. And I honestly like can't believe this stuff, like basic stuff, like how to compliment someone or how to treat other humans or how to arrange a meeting is not taught from parents to children or like taught in school or something. Like I'm shocked that I have to even explain this, but apparently it's a thing. And apparently a lot of people could benefit from it. And if that's you and what I've said here isn't enough, feel free to drop an extra question in the comments. We'll see if we get to it or check the link below in the description for my weekly Q and A sesh.